Hello and welcome to the unboxing and review of the FLIR VIEW PRO thermal imaging camera. This is the 640 model with 90mm lens. We're going to be taking a look at the box and its contents, as well as a few close-ups of the camera itself. After that we're going to take a look at the Bluetooth software and the camera's remote features, as well as some sample data. So let's go right ahead. The front of the box shows you the camera itself, while the side lists a few features such as onboard video and still image recording and PWM control of the camera functions. The rear shows a few applications of the thermal imaging camera. And let's go right ahead and open up the box. It's a simple slide over cover. The box is fairly high quality and the camera is well packaged. After opening up the box you will be greeted by a thank you note from FLIR as well as a suggestion to register the camera online. The camera comes with a small cable for video output and power input. In this case the power comes through the USB connector and the video output is through the analog video connector. Let's wrap it up and put it aside and take a look at the next thing. This is a metal fabricated GoPro adapter for the thermal imaging camera. And last but not least we have the cable for the PWM connectors and the MAF link. On the camera side we have a 7 pin Hyros DF13 plug. And the opposite side is a 6 pin DF13 connector from Hyros for PixHawk compatible flight controllers. The first connector for telemetry occupies PWM1 and 2 while the other two connectors for PWM3 and 4 are just basic receiver compatible plugs. So finally let's take out the camera and see if there's anything else in the box but that seems to be it. The packaging is very good and very well protective for the camera. Now taking a closer look at the Flare View Pro thermal imaging camera itself. It comes with a 32GB micro SD card from Flare. Sometimes it's tricky to put it back in, but that's the case with most micro SD cards. On the side of the micro SD card there are also two buttons. One is to enable Bluetooth and the other is to start stop record. The bottom of the camera just features a small sticker with the serial number and camera specifications. Now on the opposite side we have the 10 pin GoPro compatible mini USB as well as the 7 pin telemetry. The front cap is a simple rubber cap. Now let's go ahead and unscrew the retaining lock nut so we can install the GoPro mount onto the camera. There are two grooves that make sure the mount is probably fixed in place and then you just screw the lock nut back on. This GoPro mount was designed with small UAVs in mind that are usually equipped with a GoPro camera where you could just replace the GoPro camera with the Flare View Pro camera and use both the mounts as well as the 10 pin mini USB connectors for the video and power. To remove the GoPro mount you just unscrew the lock nut, remove the bracket and optionally screw the lock nut back on. If you're really tight on the weight limits on your UAV you can leave off the metal lock nut but without it you couldn't fit the proper cap which you always should put on the camera for protective purposes. Here's a close-up of the thermal imaging camera where you can see both the connectors for video, telemetry and power as well as the micro SD slot on the buttons on the other side. 
Now let's talk about the Bluetooth software and the remote features. First, you're going to have to make sure that Bluetooth is enabled on your smartphone. Then go ahead and open up the Flearview Pro app. After powering the thermal camera, you will have to wait a few seconds until you hear the beeping sound, which is a feedback for the uh, operating system to finish booting and enabling Bluetooth. Starting on the top of the interface, we have PWM1 through 4, as well as the basic settings for the camera. The lower end of the interface features three buttons for record, recalibrate, and advanced settings. Now let's go ahead and check out the color palette. The first one is white hot, the second one is black hot. The third option is called Fusion, which is probably the most famous. The fourth option is called Arctic, followed by Lava, Gray Red, Iron Bow, which is similar to Fusion, Insta Alert, and Green Hot. The HEC modes are presets for the image optimizations. The basic setting is called linear. Then there's also a default setting which offers a bit more contrast. Sea or sky. Outdoors, which in my opinion offers the most contrast. And the indoor setting, which in my opinion offers the best gradients. The HEC mode alters the DDE, ACE and SSO settings. Now let's go ahead into the advanced settings and let's check out the possible video file types. We have MJPEG and H.264. The analog video output can be selected to either NTSC or PAL. Still images we have JPEG, FFF and RAW TIFF. You have the option to flip the camera's view horizontally and vertically, as well as enable or disable the audio feedback on video recording and still image recording. In the PWM menu, you can select the functions for each PWM channel. Channel 1 through channel 2 are reserved for math link in the future and can additionally be used to manually trigger a still image capture. PWM 3 is for video start stop. and channel 4 can be used for color palettes. You have a choice of two or three different states. In the about menu we can see that this camera is featuring firmware 1.0.2 and the persistent Bluetooth option disables the Bluetooth sleep mode. The camera is currently in video mode but if you would like to switch to still images you're going to have to click on still images and then reboot the camera. In this case, we're not going to do it right now because we're currently recording a video. Here is my Spectrum DX7 radio transmitter. The top left three-way switch is currently assigned for PWM4, the color palettes, where we can flip through the hot white, fusion and arctic color palettes. In my case, the uh, record start stop is assigned to the gear switch, which is set to recording down and stop top. Here I would like to show you a few video samples of the camera in flight. In the first one we're climbing from 45 meters to 70 meters. We're using the HEC mode outdoor with the most contrast in the color palette white hot. The second example I'd like to show you is at approximately 35 meters flying altitude above ground using outdoor and flipping through the color palettes. The last example is at roughly 40 meters altitude outdoor and in the arctic palette. Now I'd like to talk about the integrated connectors and math link. If you'd like to take a closer look at this drawing, which is from the FLIR technical specifications document, you can just pause the video or download the PDF document yourself from the FLIR homepage. 
Currently, MathLink is not supported in the FlearView Pro. However, I found out that it's going to be implemented in a two-step process. The first phase is going to be using MathLink to read the telemetry data from the flight controller for the camera metadata, such as altitude, geolocations, and time. And the second phase for MathLink integration into the FlearView Pro camera is a new MathLink spec that they're working on with a group of developers to standardize camera control via the MathLink protocol. While this camera features an excellent package for small unmanned aerial systems with onboard 14-bit and video recording, I consider the lack of the uh, MathLink implementation a downside and I really don't like it that you have to reboot the camera when switching between video and still image mode. Other than this, I think the camera deserves a 4.5 stars out of 5 stars rating. Thank you very much for your time and watching my video. I'd also like to thank oemcameras.com for such a great sales experience. And if you have any questions or are interested in the FlearView Pro camera itself, feel free to contact John Palmieri from oemcameras.com and mention my name, Florian Uhlemann. And while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Bye.